نشهد أن لا إله إلا الله وحده لا شريك له الحمد لله رب العالمين الحمد لله والي الكريم وصلى الله على أنبياء أجمعين والمسيح والمحسي والمجدد لما المرسلين Are we not the bearers of witness that nothing would exist if Allah didn't create it? And that He is alone and has no part. And that all gratitude is for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, the sustainer of all the boundless universes. All gratitude is for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, the generous eternal friend. And send salutations of Allah on all of His prophets and His apostles and on the Messiah, the anointed one. And on the Mahdi, the God, and on the Mujahidah, the Mephon, which was all sent from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. We send greetings and we send peace throughout the boundless universe to all. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi ta'ala wa barakatuh. And now, the true light. Featuring Ex Sayyid, Al Imam Isma, Al Hadi, Al Ma. Yes, all the white people are the children of the devil. A lot of people worry about the fact that Muslims call human beings devils, right? They're always saying that that's the wrong thing to do, to call a human being a devil. They say all men are created in God, blah, blah, blah. You know, <laughs> look in your Bible to the book of St. John, chapter 6, verse 70. Let's say in the scriptures, let's find out. First I want, before you read, I want you to tell me who's talking. Chapter 6, verse 70 of St. John's. First tell me who is talking. You got it? Yeah. Chapter 6, verse 70. Who's talking? It says what? Jesus answered them, Have not I chosen you twelve, and one of you is a devil? <laughs> Jesus called a human being a devil. Why is it so difficult when the Honorable Elijah Muhammad comes along and tells y'all the white man is a devil, People start saying, you can't call human beings devils. Y'all write in your Bible, y'all call somebody the devil. Jesus called Judas the devil. <laughs> Read it again in case they missed it. Jesus answered them, have not I chosen you twelve, and one of you is a devil. Now stop telling us Muslims that we're wrong for calling human beings devils, because your Lord and Savior Jesus called a human being a devil. He called him a devil because his devilish works and his actions, and that he was a son of perdition, that he was going to betray him. You understand that? The white man has done everything to you that Judas has done to Jesus. Delivered you up to be killed, to be persecuted, he's crucified you, he's emasculated you, he's done everything that Judas did to Jesus. Lied on you, deceived you, he sits with you and eats and drinks with you knowing he plans to stab you in the back. So don't be frightened when we call him a devil. He is the devil. He was the devil. <laughs> he always will be the devil. Look at the Holy Quran chapter 1850. There's no Muslims who have this thing about worrying about the devil being a man. 18th chapter 50, right? Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. And the book will be placed before them, and thou will see the guilty flow. They will be adorned therein with bracelets of gold, and will wear green garments of fine silk and heavy brocade, reclining therein upon rose couches. How good the reward, and how good excellent the place of rest. They call them the guilty there, and they're dressing these guilty upward things. We're making it clear that they're talking about some type of person or some kind of being. They're not talking about some type of a uh, spirit force. See what the Holy Quran chapter 6 verse 113 says. Go ahead, right there. And thus did... Thus did we make for every prophet an enemy. The devils from among men and jinn. Where are the devils coming from, according to the Quran? Amongst Where are the devil coming from? Amongst the Is men. Is it just a spirit force, or are they human devils and physical devils, according to the Holy Quran? The Holy Quran tells us that the prophets are opposed by these devils who are either human beings or jinns. Look at it, right there. And thus did we make for every prophet an enemy, the devils from among men and jinn. That's right. It says, Nabian. Aduan, Shaitanin, El Insan, Wajin. The Shaitan is coming from El Insan, Wajin. And if you read the Holy Quran in the beginning, when Rasulullah Muhammad is receiving it, and the angel Gabriel came to him, he told him to read the name of his sister, he used the word El Insan right there for human beings. Right? Iqra bismi rabbika ala di khalaq. Khalaq al insana min alaq. Khalaq al insana min alaq. I created human beings from a thick cloth that is separated. Right here he used the same term in the Holy Quran that this insan and jinn. 
So shaitan is not just spiritual forces of jinns, shaitan are also human beings. This is what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in the Quran. I don't know where they get their doctrine from. Read it again. And thus did we make for every prophet an enemy, the devils from among men and jinn. Go ahead, see what it say though. Some of them suggesting to others, vanish falsehood, vanish falsehood. To use the Arabic word, yuhi. Some of them inspire others. You know what I'm saying? A lot of Muslims are inspired by jinns to do certain things and by devils in human form coming out of Saudi and Egypt and different places and calling themselves Muslims. They use the word for word wahin, for inspiration. One of the ways that Rasulullah received the holy scriptures. The devil is using the same method to betray us. Go ahead, read it. Uh, some of them suggesting to others varnished falsehood to deceive them. And this is what they did. These men come here and they take and varnished over the truth with falsehood. They come up with all these hadith and all these things that are taking us away from the holy scriptures. When you start talking to them and say, please go to the holy Quran, they say what the hadith says or the sahaba says. You say, please take me to the holy Quran. Well, in the hadith it says, they're taking and painted over the laws of Allah. What does Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala tell us in the last revelation of the Quran now? The last revelation now is sort of the nas. The word nas is another form of al insan again. This is talking to you people. He says, Bismillahir Rahmanir Rahim. Kul, a'udhu bi Rabbin nas. Say this to them, Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. A'udhu bi Rabbin nas. That they are to seek all of the protection. Bi Rabbin nas. By way of the Rabbin nas, the sustainer of al insan. Who is Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Then he calls himself Malik and Nas. He calls himself the ruler of all human beings. Then he says he is Ilah and Nas. He is that which created all human beings. Then he tells you from who we should seek refuge. He says, Min Sharr, from the wicked. Min Sharri Waswa, from the wicked whisperer. And he gives a name, Al Khanas, the rejected or despised one. But the whispering one, the whispers, what does he do? He comes and he suggests his thought. These pale Arabs put in people's minds, don't listen to Imam Isa, don't listen to Louis Farrakhan, don't listen to this one. And then they take it, they change the truth, they varnish it over. What I mean by varnish it? Oh, you don't have to wear a beard, you don't have to wear a veil, you don't have to do this. But they got so bad that they tell you, someone can go to Hajj for you. You can go to Mecca and be there, and some other person can perform the rites for you, but throw up. Because you don't speak the language and it's still qualified. If someone can perform the rites of Hajj for you, then someone can perform your Salat for you. And give Zakat for you. Because they belong in the same Khamsa Shahadati. These people are painted over, they're trying to destroy El Islam. Ilah al the creator of the people. Min sharri waswas al From the whispering khanas. Alladhi yuwaswi, then he repeats it. Who? Alladhi. You was we, Sufi. This one, he whispers the Sudori into your chest. He gets right inside of your chest. And then what? Sudori and Nas. Minel, Jinati, Wen Nas. The same thing you just read. Hear it again. Minel, Jinati, Wen Nas. 6113 is separating the man and the jinn. And here in the Holy Quran, in the last revelation, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is leaving us with a warning to watch out for men that are jinns. Come and propagate in Al-Islam. But have vanished over the truth. They don't want to follow Mila Ibrahim. You say Mila Ibrahim, you know what they say? Shall we follow what fools follow? It? They call it people of the Torah fools. The Quran says they're going to say that. Literally it says, when you go to them and say, have faith, amin billahi. Have the faith of those who are before you. They say, should we believe what fools believe in? Then Allah says, now they are the fools, but they don't even know it. Because they have led people off the Surah al mustaqim I just want to cover one more point, which is in Surah Al-Fatiha, so you understand Malik and why he calls himself Malik and Nas, and why and Nas is the last chapter in the Holy Quran today, and he uses it. Bismillahir Rahman Rahim. Alhamdulillahi Rabbil Alameen Ar-Rahman Ar-Rahim He says right here Maliki Yawm al He calls himself Malik al nas in the last chapter and in the first one he calls himself what? Maliki Yawm al That he is going to be the master or the ruler on that day when people are judged. 
And most people are falling victim to the devil because they don't recognize him. They think the devil is, they don't think the devil as a man, they see the devil as some kind of a force. They see him as some wicked spirit. You go and tell them, the white man's the devil, you know what they say? Don't listen to the answers, they're just racist. They don't know what they're talking about. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala wouldn't have created a human being as a devil. The Holy Quran says over and over again that he is the devil. Turn the Holy Quran to the second chapter, to the 14th verse. وَإِذَا لَقُلْ الَّذِينَ آمَنُوا قَالُوا آمَنَا وَإِذَا what? قَالُوا إِلَّا شَيْطَانِ حِينَ What's that? شَيْطَانِ حِينَ What is that? The word shaitan, single. They have shayateenihi, plural. Now how can there be more than one devil? Read your English. And when it is said to those, have faith, they say, what? We have faith also. We do have faith. <laughs> Go ahead. And when they are left alone with their physical devils. Plurally. When they're left with their devils, plurally. <laughs> they say to them, surely we are with you. And we are only ridiculing them. وَإِذَا لَقُلْ الَّذِينَ آمَنُوا قَالُوا آمَنَا وَإِذَا قَالُوا إِلَّا شَيَاطِينِهِمْ قَالُوا إِنَّمَا مَعْكُمْ إِنَّمَا نَحْنُ مُسْتَعْزِيُونَ What do they say? All we were doing to you people was mocking, making fun of you. But it says Allah يَسْتَعْزِيُ بِهِ Allah, He criticizes them. And leave them blindly running on if you read number 15. What is it that these people fear? What is it that they are turning away from? I'll show you right in the same chapter. Holy Quran 2, 130. What are they so afraid of? They're afraid of this simple practice. وَمَنْ يَرْغَبُ عَنْ مِلَا إِبْرَاهِيمِ إِلَا مَنْ سَفَيْهِ نَفْسَهُ Now what is that? And as for those who reject or forsake Mila Ibrahim, the religion of Abraham, what are they? They're nothing illa men safiha, nothing but fools. And they're speaking about their whole spirit, no, nefsahu. But they don't know it. Read what it says in English. And as for him who turned away, rejecting the law and the religion of Ibrahim, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he makes a fool of himself. And indeed we have chosen him, Ibrahim, in this physical world, and verily in the last day, forever. He is of the perfectionist. And was Abraham a Muslim? The next yes. verse tells you he was. You ain't got to say yes. Let the Quran say yes, he was a Muslim. When his sustainer said to him, Ibrahim, surrendering in peace. Listen. Abraham said, Aslam to li Rabbil Alameen. Now I am a Muslim for the Lord of all the boundless universes. Aslam to. The so-called Sunnis say we're crazy when we call ourselves Islamic Hebrews. Abraham was called Ibar or Ibra, Hebrew. And he was called a Muslim. The word Hebrew has nothing to do with what religion you belong to. It has to do with the act that was performed back in history. When they cross the Tigris Euphrates Valley, they just don't know what they're talking about. They're being misled by people who are trying to keep them away from knowing who they really are. They don't want you to know who you are. Them pale Arabs are hooked up. Them Jews and all those people, they're all one family. They're hooked up to keep you down. So, um, That's what Rasulullah said in the latter day. His ummah would come out. His community would come out. A nation of people that would enjoy good, prevent evil, and kill those who cause turmoil. He, they knew this was going to happen. So they turned away from Abraham's religion and gave the people a new religion. It's called Muhammadism. They turned away from the Quran and started giving them more hadith and more traditions of men so they wouldn't stay close to the scriptures and see who these people really are. If you stay close to the scriptures of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, that which he sent down, illa Rasulullah Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, nobody can deceive you. If you start getting into hadith and traditions of men, you have conflicts of what's true, what's not true, what Muhammad said, what they heard he said, what he didn't object to, they get all the stuff where the Quran is men when, men aina. Al-Quran min Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala wa ka'al fi al-Quran, Surah Al-Baqarah. Zalika al-Kitabu la rayba fi. He said it. This scripture has no doubt. He said about no hadith having no doubt. He said this scripture has no doubt in it. Excuse me. Go ahead, brother. Um, so you're saying the devils could be spiritual and human beings? I'm saying the devils thought you want to see different places. Isaiah 14, 16 tells you the devil is a man. Turn to it. I'll give you a whole bunch of quotes about the devil's nature. 
and I'll give you him as a spirit also. Isaiah 14, 16. <clears throat> they that see thee shall narrowly look upon thee, and consider thee, saying, Is this the man that hath made the earth to tremble, that did shake kingdoms? They're speaking about the devil, and what terminology they say, is this the what? Is this the man is that made the, the earth to tremble? Now turn to 2 Thessalonians, and that's 2, 3. Let no man deceive you by any means that for that for that day shall not come except there come a fall, falling away first and that man of sin be revealed, the that, son of perdition. That what of sin? The man of sin be the revealed. The man of sin. The son of perdition. That's the devil again. Now when they want to speak of the devil as being a fallen angel, go to Job 1, the 6, I'll tell you about him there. Go to uh, 2 Corinthians 11, 14. Go to Revelation 9, 11. And go to Matthew 25, 41. And all of these will tell you about how he fell from grace, how Satan was a fallen angel. I have the one in Job. Let me read the one in Job. Please. Now there was a day when the sons of Allah came to present themselves before the sustainer, and Satan came also among them. So therefore he was amongst the angels at this point, correct? No. So he did have a spiritual being. He can personify like angels, like Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in the Quran, he sent the angel Gabriel to Mary as a bashara and as a human being. So the angel Gabriel is light at times, nor the men of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, while in sign at times. And he comes out as a human being at times with a body, a bashara. This is what Allah teaches us. He sent him as a man. Go ahead. And the sustainer said unto Satan, Whence comest thou? Then Satan answered the sustainer and said, From going to and fro in the earth. Where does Satan roam? From to and fro in the how earth. How did he get there? Revelation chapter 12 will tell you how he got there. He was cast down out of heaven, and there was no place found for him in heaven anymore. So you'll be able to think the devil is roaming around in some spiritual world. You better read Revelation uh, chapter 12, verse 7. Read it. 12, 7? Start at 6 and come down. Okay. And the woman fled into the wilderness, where she has a place prepared of the law, that they should feed her there a thousand two hundred and three score days. And there was war in heaven. Michael and his angels fought against the dragon, and the dragon and his angels, and prevailed not, neither was their place found any more in heaven. And the great dragon was cast out, that old serpent called the devil, and Satan, which deceiveth the whole world, he was cast out into the earth. And also in Matthew, 25, 41, they're going to speak about the devil, they're going to speak about him being cursed, and they're going to speak about him having angels being cast down again. And this is in Matthew, one of Jesus' disciples. Read it. Then shall he say also unto them on the left hand, Depart from me, ye cursed, into everlasting fire, prepare for the devil and his angels. And so the devil does have angels, and his angels, according to the book of Revelation, Chapter 12, verse 7, was cast out of heaven. So he was once a spiritual being who was cast down to earth. Satan was in the garden. Let's go to different titles of Satan. What is he called? Ephesians 2, 2 has some of his names. John 14:30, Ephesians 6, 12, John 8, 44. All these are different names of Satan. Can I ask you another question? Sure, go ahead. Um... When Eve was um, deceived by the snake, can the devil transform, transform himself to a snake, or was he speaking through the snake? The devil can transform himself into a snake if he wanted to. When Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala speaks about the devil being a deceiver in the scriptures, he's not talking about a serpent. He doesn't use the word shaitan there. He used the word higher, a living thing. All right, but the Christians turned that into the serpent because of the statement that's found in Genesis chapter 3, verse 1. Now the serpent, that's not the word for snake though. A living thing was the most evil. And then we said he removed his leg and on his belly shall he go all the days of his life. So people associate him with a snake. But obviously, if the Almighty had to remove Satan's legs, then he wasn't a snake. You see that? When he got cursed, it says he removed his legs, and on his belly shall he go all the days of his life. You don't have any snakes with legs. Now, scripturally, they say the serpent of the scriptures was a reptile and did have legs because snakes today have hips. But the present day snake would not be identified with this in any kind of way. And the religion that they're following back there was Hinduism. And the Hindus to this very day still worship the cobra. It's one of their symbols, the snake. So was it a snake that Eve was deceived by, or? Read it. 
It says, Now the serpent was more stubborn than any beast of the field. First of all, a snake is not a beast. It's a reptile. And it doesn't roam the fields that which the Lord of law had made. And he said unto the woman, Yea, has the law said, Ye shall not eat of every tree of the garden? And the woman said unto the serpent, We may eat of the fruit of the trees of the garden, but of the fruit of the tree which is in the midst of the garden, the law has said, Ye shall not eat of it, neither shall ye touch it, lest ye die. And the serpent said unto the woman, Ye shall not surely die. For the law does know that in that day ye eat thereof, then your eyes shall be opened, and ye shall be as gods, knowing good and evil. Snakes don't talk either. So they're using a symbol in the scripture to represent evil. You understand what I'm saying? So the answer to your question is the devil can take any form he wants. He can come as a friend, he can come as a teacher, he can come as a hobby, he can come as a desire, he can come as a college grant, he can come as a student loan, he can come as many things. He has the power to take on many forms, but he has incarnated in the form of a man. Yeah, that's the question there. Okay. This gentleman, this guy been asking about a white man being a devil. The question still haven't been answered. He's been answering saying, yes, it's a human being, but he's asking about the white man. Oh, I'm sorry. Uh, let me answer it for you then. Okay. All right. Turn your books to Leviticus so we can find out. Uh, we can go to chapter 14 first and then go back to chapter 13 so we can see his complexion, the color of his skin, the color of his hair, and the color of his eyes. <laughs> Okay, we're in the 33rd verse, 14th chapter of the book of Leviticus. And the Lord spoke unto Moses and unto Aaron, saying, that's the 33rd verse, now we're in the 34th. When ye be coming to the land of Canaan, which I give to you for a possession, and I put the plague of leprosy in the house of the land of your possession. Now, any verse in 13 <laughs> will just about explain. First, we're establishing here that we're talking about a people called Canaanites. And that these people received a specific curse. And now we want to find out what kind of curse did the Almighty put on these people. And that's why we're in the books of Leviticus, the books of the law. The word Leviticus comes from the word Levi, or Levitical law. And these were laws given to the prophet Moses for the children of Israel. Right? Now, if we go to the 13th chapter of Leviticus, we're going to find a whole lot of places where they speak about the color of their hair and everything. And they're going to call it that old leprosy. Okay. Leviticus 13, 9th verse. When the plague of leprosy is in a man, then he shall be brought unto the priest. And the priest shall see him. And behold, if the rising be white in the skin, and they have turned to hair white, and there be quick raw flesh in the rising, it is an old leprosy in the skin of his flesh. And the priest shall pronounce him unclean. If we want to see his blonde hair, let's go to 1330. And it says blonde, thin hair. So they don't mean black people who have the disease of leprosy, whose hair stays thick, even if they have white hair from that disease, lapoma. This is, they say thin. Then the priest shall see the plague, and, behold, if it be in sight deeper than the skin, and there be it a yellow, thin hair, then the priest shall pronounce him unclean. It is a dry scowl, even a leprosy upon the head of his beard. Go to 36 of the same chapter. He's going to speak about blonde hair again. Then the priest shall look on him, and, behold, if the scar be spread in the skin, the priest shall not seek for the yellow hair. He is unclean. If you went to the Holy Quran, the 20th chapter, the 102nd verse, we're going to talk about the color of his eyes. Now, so far, we got several things established. The color of his skin, the color of his hair, and now let's get the color of his eyes. And then I'm going to show you who the family of the righteous is by color in the Songs of Solomon. Okay, 20th chapter of Quran, 102nd ayah, or verse. Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim. On the day when the trumpet shall be blown, and we will gather the guilty blue-eyed on that day. So we didn't cover that this tribe of Canaan has got a curse put on them, and the curse resulted in several things. One, reading all of Leviticus, you find that they have various degrees of leprosy and disease, which resulted in their skin being bleached white, as well as their hair being blonde and thin, as well as the eyes being blue. Now, if we go to Genesis 9.25, we'll find out that this is right after the flood, and the family of Noah had just assembled themselves because everybody up until that time were all one race, one family, because they got the names of father and son straight on down. And it does tell us that Adam was created the dust of the ground. We know that even historians or anthropologists today are saying that Adam and Eve was black. They're no longer disputing that they came out of Sudan and Africa and that they were black. So if Adam and Eve was originally black, then up until Noah's time, everybody on the earth had to be black. So now where did the white race come from? That's the point. And how they become so devilish is another thing. Now in here in Genesis, Chapter 9, 
verse 25, that they planted what we spoke about in Leviticus as having this curse of leprosy is mentioned as getting a curse. Go ahead. And he said, Curse be Canaan, a servant of servants shall he be unto his brethren. Now even before Canaan was born, the Almighty Creator in chapter 9, verse 18, mentions to know about his sons, that one of his sons is going to be the father of Canaan before the incident took place. Read it. And the sons of Noah that went forth of the ark were Shem, Ham, and Japheth. And Ham is the father of Canaan. Now why didn't they mention Japheth's sons and Shem's sons? They only mentioned one son, and that was the son, Canaan, and they said he was from Ham. Then later on in the same chapter, we go back down to chapter 9, verse 22. Okay, and Ham, the father of Canaan, saw the nakedness of his father and told his two brethren without. Here they speak about an incident that Ham did before Canaan was born in Genesis, but they add Canaan's name. Go ahead. And Shem and Japheth took a garment and laid it upon both their shoulders and went backward and covered the nakedness of their father. And their faces were backward, and they saw not their father's nakedness. And Noah woke from his wine and knew what his younger son had done unto him. Which was Ham, his younger son. And he said, Cursed be Canaan. Why did he curse Canaan and not Ham? He should have cursed Ham. Ham violated. But he put the curse here on Canaan and said, A servant of servants shall he be unto his brothers. Right? No. And he did what to the other two sons? Okay, and he said, Blessed be the Lord of Allah of Shem, and Canaan shall be his servant. So he blessed one side of the family, Shem, and cursed another side. The same thing that happened like in Genesis. One side, the Semitic people, we know as a historical fact, the white man tells you they migrated into Africa. We know that the Hamite people and the Kushite people migrated into Africa. We know historically that the Mesramites are the ancient Egyptians called Misra, and they're in Africa. So if those seeds that were blessed went to Africa, then the seed that was cursed went somewhere else. They became known as the Canaanites, so the complexion of the devil, according to the Bible, who was cursed since the foundation of the world was white skin in Leviticus, blue eyes in the Quran, blonde hair in Leviticus, coming out of the tribes of Canaan. And Canaan had many sons. And if you trace their sons out through the Bible, the Amorites, the Hevites, the Archites, the Jebusites, you can trace them, you'll find that they roam throughout the world, and they're the ones that oppose the children of Israel throughout their sojourning. Now go to Songs of Solomon. Before I let you have the mic, just one more thing. Saw the Solomon to find out what the side that was blessed looked like. That's the one five one? Yes. I am black but comely, O ye daughters of Jerusalem. What color did he make these people? Black. These are black people here. This is Solomon's people in Jerusalem, where the book was revealed in 1020 BCE. He called them black and he identified them with a specific tribe of people. Who was that tribe of people he identified them with? As the tents of Kedah. Who's the tribe of Kedah? Seed of Ishmael from Abraham. That's right. Here you got Ishmael's son, which you can find throughout Genesis 15, 16, and 17. And he'll tell you about his sons through Hagar, who gave birth to Ishmael. And Ishmael gave birth to a second son named Kedah. And Hagar came from Egypt, so that we know the Egyptians are black. So that means the Mesoramites, the Cushites, the Hamites, and the Shemites were all black people who had migrated over into Africa from Asia. So the white folks on the planet Earth are the cursed seed of Canaan, and we are the black seed. The Bible points out the complexion. The Bible points out the hair and the texture. The Bible points out the curse. When the Mormons said it about black people for centuries, it was okay. The Mormons were saying the same thing I'm saying, only they wasn't using no scriptural facts. They were saying the curse was on black people, and we got big lips because when we found out we had a curse, we stuck our lips out, our, our head napped up. A whole bunch of stupid, read the Mormon doctrine. They were saying it about us. <laughs> But now the truth is in. Nobody I've ever heard, even Minister Farrakhan. Imam Isa teaches the importance of doing for self, just like Elijah taught us. Imam Isa also has his followers dressing in the garb of the prophets, like the Quran says. I used to call myself a black Israelite Jew, because I thought I was from the tribe of Levi. Nobody could tell me different. Then I finally read one of El Imam Isa's books, and I found out that the Israelites never called themselves Jews that they were all destroyed, except for the tribes of Judah and Dan. But in the Old Testament, the books of Moses, it does speak about Muhammad. And thanks to Elim Ramisa, I now know that I'm an Ishmaelite, and that we should follow all of the scriptures. <laughs> Okay, okay. Now you said about the blonde hair and the blue eyes. All white people 
don't have all that. That's right, because they told Abraham, do not mix your seed with the Canaanites. The children of Israel mix their blood in with these tribes. You today are mixing them, not you per se, but black people today are going to the village, speaking out these people and marrying and mixing and destroying our genes. The Holy Quran teaches us that Allah made us into tribes and He made us into families that we may out of phone We may know all about each other. He never intended us to mix our genes. If He did, He wouldn't have made people in various hues and colors. He made us in various hues and colors He intended for us to mix. We mix our seeds with them. They spend fortunes trying to make white women attractive to black men so we'll go integrate with them so they can absorb from us. One of their white brothers made a big mistake on television just this week. He admitted that you're all a superior. That's why they're on his case, not for what he said. What they're mad about is the fact that he said that you're all a superior. He said white people will never be able to match blacks scholastically. That's why the whites are mad at him. That's why he got fired, because he didn't say nothing. He said the truth. Black men have stronger legs because they were bred to be slaves. White men cannot compete. White people got mad about that. You understand? The white man makes his own mistakes. He said we're superior. Now, blacks are going to try to make us equal when the white man himself is saying blacks are superior. You're going to find Negroes get up and say, no, there's no difference between whites and blacks. How come we play better than them? We box better than we run faster. We jump higher than them. We sing better than we dance better than we move better than we think better than them. And we care about each other more than they do. What am I going to tell me two animals are the same when one animal is out killing people, destroying people, spreading diseases, and while other animals is being killed, being destroyed, and getting that disease? And then you're going to say they're the same? You can put a panther with a tiger, or a tiger will whip a panther to death. Both of them are cats. Only the panther's black. He, he may stand something like three feet off the ground, a tiger stands almost like four feet off the ground. The white man is like a, a leopard in the Bible. They describe him like a leopard in Revelation. We're like a panther, black and beautiful. If you think you can beat the white man, you're fooling yourself. Say it. Okay. Now about the veils with the Muslim women. Why is that necessary from Adam and Eve? Let's go back and find out, did it come from Muslim women, first of all? And Genesis says that it didn't come from us. Refer to Genesis chapter 24, verse 65. Genesis says it comes from the Jews or the Israelites, and Jesus got his teaching from the Israelites, so it came from y'all, not us. The thing is that the veil came out of the tribes of Judah. The word Judah is where they got the land Judea. The land Judea is where they got the word Jews. The veil did not come from El Islam. Stop blaming it on us. These are laws that you people had, not us. Hirams did not come from us. Yo, Adam, Abraham had three wives. Solomon had 200 wives. Stop trying to make the prophet Muhammad responsible for some of your sins. These are things that you Christians and you Jews came up, and only because we obey the scriptures more than you do we follow them. You all just refuse to follow them. We do. So in your Bible, the veil comes from you. A harem, many wives, polygamy comes from you, not from us. You understand? And people are blaming us for your own laws. They always say, why do Muslims have so many wives? Why do Muslim women have to cover their faces? These are not Muslim laws. These are Hebraic laws. These are Judaic laws. These are Christian laws. And we want to ask y'all, why did y'all get us into this mess and get our women wearing the veils and get us with all these wives and then turn on us and ask us why we do it? That's the question that should be asked. Y'all got us doing it and then y'all turn on us and ask us why we do it. We got it from you. <laughs> Okay. We consider ourselves followers of Abraham. You got us mixed up with the Sunni Muslims. We consider ourselves Islamic Hebrews. We follow all the scriptures. We do. That's why our women wear the veil. We don't wear the veil because it's enjoined in the Quran only. We wear the veil because it's the law of Abraham all the way down. Okay. <laughs> okay. <laughs> now why don't you wear a veil if you follow the law of the scriptures? Well... <laughs> Good question. <laughs> yeah, because it didn't come from us. I watched that program with Dunahue the other day. You remember that? Did y'all see that program? I loved it. They was talking about the veil. Couldn't do nothing about it. They had a, a selected audience, a selected panel. The devil was so true. He had it all fixed up. Had some radical Muslims <laughs> jumping up and down, acting crazy. Try to call through so you can ask questions. They never let you through. They never let it in. I had no choice but to sit there and tolerate the devil manipulating us and doing that same old game. Hello. That's my first time here. I want to ask you a question about where does the white man come from? I mean, I read, I, I looked, and, and 
on Channel 13, uh, there was a, 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 a thing about the evolution of man, where man comes from the apes. But I know as a people that we will come from Allah. Uh, Allah made us from black mud. The white man did come from an ape. <laughs> that's, what I, that's what I'm... No sure. problem, I got a problem. He did, he is an ape. We're not. You know what he makes a mistake, brother? He says that they were cavemen. Right? Yeah, we're not from caves. Let me make something clear. Then he says that you came from a monkey, correct? Yes. I asked them to show me what monkey lives in caves. Monkeys don't live in caves. Where they get that from? And they be elaborating on this in the university like it's something heavy. You know, a man came from the ape. You know, he was a cave man. But now wait a minute. If you was an ape, then you lived in a tree. If you was a cave man, you lived in a cave. Now, he is a monkey who lives in a cave. However, they also are monkeys who live in trees. You understand? Yeah. When he came down out of the tree, he went into the caves. This don't have nothing to do with us. The only part we played on this is we were watching them. <laughs> but we the one who taught them. That's right. Abraham went up into the mountains and taught them. Because an ape could not walk unless you saw someone walking. That's right. We taught them everything they knew. We civilized them. Don't let anyone call you civilized. That's an insult. When a white man says the black man is civilized, he's insulting you. Because that means in order for you to be civilized, you must have been a barbaric or a savage, and you've been made civil. You understand what I'm saying? Yeah. We are not civilized. We are civilizers. Is the difference? Uh, you, me you mentioned that when uh, a bride should come to a groom, she should come in purity, meaning that she is a, a virgin. What about the man? Well, how is this that uh, a man can have multiple wives? Then? First of all, the follows, a man doesn't have virginity because a man doesn't have a hymen that can be broken. The reason why virginity is ascribed to women and not men in the scriptures is because a woman has a hymen. Okay. All right, you follow that? But what so, does that have to do with purity? I beg your pardon? What does that have to do with purity? Because the word they use in the scriptures in those translations for uh, virginity you will find in the 31st Proverbs where Lamarill is getting instructed by his mother and they make purity and virginity synonymous when in reality purification, pahara, in the scriptures has nothing to do with virginity whatsoever. It has to do with the breaking of the hymen. That is bad translation that has done that. And as far as making polygamy lawful, polygamy is made lawful in the books of Leviticus when it speaks about a woman being unclean for seven days when she is on her menstruation. If a man has one wife and he follows the books of Leviticus but, and while that woman becomes unclean for seven days, he has no one to cook or clean or take care of it. Thus, in Genesis, the prophet Abraham وسلم, had what they referred to as a maidservant whose name was Hagar who came from Egypt. And then when he found out that his wife Sarah was barren and couldn't have children, he went in unto this maidservant and made her his wife, you follow? And gave birth to the son Ishmael. So the scripture by the laws are telling man that it is necessary to be polygamous. Now, in the Western world society, or in a community like our own, where we have certain laws set up, where women are provided for, the men are provided for, if your wife is unclean, someone else does the cooking, then it doesn't become necessary. But in any other society of Islamic or Judaic or true Christian practices, polygamy would be necessary. The Christians have no point of view whatsoever on marriage and divorce because the man who they ascribe to, Jesus the Messiah, never got married and didn't lay down laws on marriage, divorce, polygamy, cleanliness, etc. You follow? Because he spoke predominantly a spiritual doctrine, not a physical doctrine, assuming that his followers were followers of Moses, like he said in the books of St. John. The law came from Moses, but grace and truth came from him. So he assumed that they were following the laws of Moses, and in following the laws of Moses would be subject to follow the book of Leviticus, which has the law on polygamy in it. And he called them followers of Abraham, and being followers of Abraham, Abraham himself, as you know, had three wives, Sarah, Hagar, and Ketora, so therefore Jesus expected his followers to follow Moses and Abraham. Moses had two wives, Abraham had three wives, and Solomon had 
200 wires. So what happens in the Western world is people tend to ascribe or attribute polygamy to Islam, and that's not true. Polygamy did not start with the Muslim world, nor did harems. And no, you know, multiple wives, all that, and the veil, the wearing of the face veil. The I'm really trying to find the woman's place. You know, the woman's, the okay, the woman's place is in the 31st Proverbs in the Bible. If you read the 31st Proverbs, you'll get the whole story of a woman's place right there. Now, if you want to take the time to read it, it will tell you about the woman's place. As far as her dress code, you'll find it all the way from Genesis 38, where Rebecca has to pull her face veil over her face when she sees Isaac coming in the field. This is way before, thousands of years before the birth of our Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam and what people are calling Islam today. And the same thing applies to polygamy or more than one wife. This goes back to Abraham, who was back to Genesis thousands of years before before Muhammad. Thus, the laws of face covering, the laws on polygamy, more than one wife, are not founded in the Islamic religion as they call it today. It is founded in the Torah or an ancient Judaic and Hebraic teachings of which Jesus ascribed to. Okay? So thus, again, virginity is not based on washing. Virginity is based on a woman's hymen. The Almighty did not make mistakes. If he did, he wouldn't have saw Abraham as a man qualified to go down to the land of Sodom as a symbol of righteousness. You see, he chose Abraham to go down to the land of Sodom as a symbol of righteousness after Abraham had already had a second wife named Hagar and a son. So the Almighty who chose him did not see anything about his polygamous system as unrighteous because he still commanded Abraham to be a prophet after that, as well as Moses. Okay? Okay. Yes, you know, if you just answer my question, I, I was going to ask you about the kind of woman, about how, how, she, how she became healed. And I know that all the white people is the devil. How can the devil be healed? Who healed her? The white woman. Jesus. So, who healed her? Do you, did Jesus heal her? No, he didn't. If you look at Matthew, you talk about Matthew chapter 15, right? Yeah. Jesus didn't heal that woman. That woman healed herself. Jesus would not touch that woman. How can the devil be healed? Huh? How can the devil be healed? Because they're talking about an insanity and a possession of demons. In the Quran, they speak about the devil in two different forms. One is that he's a man, and one is that he's a jinn. So they can not only be a wicked person, they can go off and start becoming serial killers and massacring me. Don't you see the rash of demonology on television now? Oh, so what you're saying is you just cool down? No, the devil is, as a demon force can be exercised out of a white person. That will not stop them from being wicked by nature. Watch what the woman says. My daughter is what? Grievously vexed with She's a devil. Vexed means angry. She's acting unruly. So you got some white people who walk around and they say, Good evening. There's a certain kind of devil. He says, All black people are not bad. There are some intelligent black people. I have a friend that's black. He's not a troublemaker. <laughs> no, it's not true that all black people are drug addicts. All black people are not on welfare. No, some of them are trying to be good Americans. <laughs> all these all these tricky statements. Then you got the other ones that says, burn the niggas. Burn all the niggas. And the Puerto Ricans with them. Burn them. And, and in the Chinese. Burn everybody who's not blocked. Get them all. That's another kind of demon. There are certain demons that are uncontrollable and certain ones that walk up to you and pretend they're your friend. with Adam in the, in the garden in Eden. The serpent went not to Adam, but to Eve. Why was that? How could he go to Adam? And is that pertaining to today in this world's life when the devil deals with the black man, he might go around to his women? That's right. It's very close. Same thing. You know why he wouldn't go to Adam? Huh? Well, no. Because Adam had been informed. So who was it that the Almighty was speaking to when he told him not to go pay the tree? Adam was the one the Almighty spoke to from the beginning of Genesis, mm -hmm. not to Eve. The devil knew that he can go to the woman and get her quicker than he can get Adam. Just like the devil knows now, if he keeps giving black women jobs, making more money than you, that she will castrate you. He knows this. He's raising our woman up above us in every walk of the business. Are there more male groups out or more female groups now? More female. More male vocalists or more female? What are all the clothes catering to now? Female. What are all the jobs opening up for now? Female. You see what he's doing? Yeah. He is taking Eve again, and he is deceiving Eve by giving her the wealth. 
and she will deliver Adam. He knows if he gets the woman, she'll deliver Adam. Black women will run out marrying white men. Because white men have the money. They say, he'll take care of me. He'll take care of my kids. He'll see that my kids go to college. You see they have a future. Yeah, but that's only because the white man took everything from you. If you had it, you would have did the same thing. She can't see it that way. She has to see for tomorrow. That's all part of the devil's plan. So right now, he has the woman in front of the tree again, and he's doing it all over again. Okay, and um, we're to 144,000 in the Crystal City in the year 2000. What will be happening while they're in Crystal City? What will be going on on Earth at that time? Or will there be an Earth? Yes, there'll be an Earth. And that's what they call in the book in Revelation, Tribulation Period. Okay. That's what they're talking about when they say, Number nine, and the fifth angel sounded, and I saw a star fall from heaven upon the earth, and to him was given the key of the bottomless pit. That's the incident we talked about. Revelation chapter nine. It's the same angel with that same power. All right? Mm -hmm. And he opened the bottomless pit, and there rose a smoke out of the pit, as the smoke of a great furnace. And the sun and the air was darkened by reason of the smoke of the pit. Remember, John is way back 2,000 years ago. This is the year 96 of the 2,000 years. And he's in prison and he's seeing a vision. In his vision, he sees an angel and a star. This star hits the earth and a gust of smoke comes out of the earth. He's looking at a bomb. He doesn't know what a bomb is. There was no bombs in his time. There was no airplanes in his time. There was no armies that he knew of in his time, other than armies that fought by chariots because he saw the Romans fight. All right? So watch how he goes on. And there came out of the smoke locusts upon the earth, and unto them was given the power of scorpions of the earth have power. He sees locusts after the smoke, and this big thing is the earth, which he calls a star, which calls this big gust of smoke from the bottom of his pitch, which they all thought that hell was in the center of the earth back then. He said, now he sees locusts. What is unique about these locusts? It will tell you. It says, and it was commanded them. These locusts were being commanded. Locusts do not get commanded. Locusts fly out of instinct, like any other insect. It was commanded them that they should not hurt the grass of the earth, neither the green thing, neither any tree, but only men that have not the seal of Allah in their foreheads. You see that? These locusts were set forth and given a command to destroy everybody on earth, not the trees. We're talking about a neutron bomb. A bomb that does not destroy houses and trees, but only living things. Only human beings and animals and things like that is what he's talking about. He didn't know what a neutron bomb was. They didn't even have it back in, in the early 1914s when the Jehovah Witness in the Seven Day Adventist was being founded, so you won't find an understanding of it in any of their books. Because they didn't wait until the prophecy was fulfilled. Everybody launched forth with these new churches of lies. Where are we? Chapter 4, verse 4. 4. And it was commanded them that they should not hurt the grass of the earth, neither any green thing, neither any tree, but only those men which have not the seal of Allah. Only those men who are not Abdullah. And don't think because a person calls themselves a Muslim that they have the seal. They don't. They have a seal on their hearts. They are summun bukmun hummun. They're deaf, dumb, and blind. They are the ones that are perpetrators of the most confusion in Islam, the so-called Arab world, because they don't want to read all the scriptures. They don't want to dress in the white house. They want to live by the wrong laws. Watch them. They are the devil's children also. It says, And to them it was given, meaning the locusts, that they should not kill them, but that they should torment five months. That's a radiation fallout. And their torment was as a torment of a scorpion when it strikes a man. You know about a scorpion. Mm -hmm. When he strikes a man, a man goes into convulsions, he gets boils, he sweats, and he eventually dies. Just like radiation. But John did not know what radiation was, remember, he had to explain things as he understood them. And in those days shall man seek death and shall not find it. He was telling us that that was future. In those days, not now, in those days men are going to seek death and shall not find it, and shall desire to die and death shall flee from them. When that bomb strikes on earth, now these acts and why it happens, while the 144,000 with the lamb, under that on earth, this is happening. Armageddon is breaking loose. World wars are breaking loose. While they're being prepared to come forth and untangle all that mess. Number seven. 
and the shape of the locusts, and this is a cue that these are not regular locusts, and the shapes of the locusts were like unto horses prepared for battle. See, these locusts do not fly in formation. You understand that? Yeah, okay. These here locusts were flying like horses prepared to battle. They were lined up and flying in formation like jets. He's going to make it even clearer that he's talking about jets. It says, And all their heads were the clouds like gold. He saw the light of the sun reflecting off their metal. And their faces were the faces of men. Because when you look at a plane in the front, it looks like it has two eyes and a mouth. Uh, he didn't know what he was looking at. And they had hair, like the hair of women. And they had teeth, and their teeth were the teeth of lions because the tiger fighters used to draw faces with teeth on their planes. Okay, yeah. Okay. So he saw this. He's looking at this sword. He's things flying. They had metal on them. They were flying in formation. They were sending out stings upon the earth. And he was like, what is this? So he said, it must be locusts because locusts were the thing that in the Middle East they dreaded most. When locusts came, that was the end of all your crops. So locusts was like the devil in the East. Number nine. And they had... Here's the key. They had breastplates as it were of iron. That meant as it were, meant he was in doubt. Of iron. He saw locusts with breastplates on. No, he saw airplanes. The breastplates are iron. He's looking up and seeing metal locusts flying in formation, spitting out fire. You see that? And all this happened after a bomb hit the earth. This is the world war that's about to come right now. This was written before it happened. Where are we? Nine. Nine. The, the, the sound of the winds was as the sound of chariots and many horses running into battle. And when he heard the sounds of the wings of these locusts, they weren't like the buzzing sound of locusts. They sounded like the noise of chariots, which were the engines of planes. Like the plane they call wings or the concourse that makes so much noise they don't even want it to land. John didn't know what they were. He heard them sound like the reels of a chariot running. And you know what that sounds like? The engines of a plane. And they had tails like unto scorpions. And there were stings in their tails. And their power was to hurt men five months. And if you check radiation fallout, it's five months. They saw things coming from, they saw these planes. You ever see the back of a plane, this thing is sticking up? Yeah. That's what they thought was the tail of a scorpion. They didn't know what that was. Go ahead. And they had a king over them. Now these scorpions had a king. Come on. And who was the king that's over him? Says, which is the angel of the bottomless pit. Who was the angel of the bottomless pit? E. Bliss, who was the angel who was cast out of heaven, who battled against Michael. And he's the angel of the bottomless pit. E. Bliss, Satan, the dragon, the beast, which I read before. He was the one who was ruling over these locusts. They will give you names for them. Whose name in Hebrew tongue is Abaddon. Abba means father of doom, Abaddon. And Apollyon means the source of destruction in Greek. They give you two names, Hebrew and Greek. That means that this book of Revelation was not revealed in Hebrew and Greek. Because if it was, then they wouldn't have to translate from Hebrew and Greek. You understand? If the book was in Hebrew and Greek, why am I giving you references to the two languages? Yeah, right. It must have been in another language, which is Arabic. Go ahead. One woe is past, and behold, there come two woes more hereafter. We had the First World War, the Second World War, and now we're getting ready to go into the what? Third. The Third World well, He said, two of them are gone, y'all got one more coming, and that's the War of the Worlds. And you're getting ready for that right now. You're not getting ready for it. Why it is, that's why they're snatching their money out the stock market now. And it's going to get way out of hand. And the Arab countries are going to suffer because they're too ignorant to see it because they don't read the scriptures, they don't see the prophecies. They're going to suffer. They're going to go through famines and die because they're not smart to see where to be. You know the best place to be when that happens? Tabernacle of the Most High. That's right. Right in America. You have been listening to The True Light, sponsored by the original tents of Kedar, located at 717 Bushwick Avenue in Brooklyn, New York. You are also invited to attend the Questions and Answers class every Sunday from 1 p.m. to 6 p.m. in the Hall of Knowledge at 548 Park Street in Brooklyn, New York. And now, more profound than ever before, the Pamphlets of Peace, authored by the Master Teacher and Spiritual Guide, El Sayyid El Imam Isa El Hadi El Mahdi, covering such topics as who's who on the planet Earth, the resurrection, who 
was noble Drew Ali? Who was Jesus' father? Who was Marcus Garvey? St. Paul, disciple or deceiver, and much, much more. Also to aid in your spiritual growth, we have a beautifully crafted hand-woven prayer rug designed by El Sayyid El Imam Isa El Hadi El Mahdi. We also have a large assortment of prayer beads, Nubian and Sufi oils and incense. The original tense of Kedar would like for you to write or call us and let us know how the true light has changed your life. Remember, above all things, truth is truth. Five verses of Surat al originally revealed to the Prophet Muhammad as the first chapter. It is today recorded as the 96th. As translated by as Sayyid Al Imam Isa Al Hadi Al Mahdi, it reads as follows O seal of the Prophets of Allah, Muhammad, by the supreme sovereignty of your sustainer and creator, you are being ordered to read by beginning with the name of your illustrious sustainer, who is the creator of all things. He, Allah, created all human beings of a self-separating. So read, because your sustainer is most generous. He, Allah, taught human beings what they would have never known. Thank <laughs> you. 